Hello there, so I've decided to start a vlog series about my experiences with writing, and this first topic is perhaps a bit more incendiary than <laughs> some topics I'll cover in the future, but I wanted to start strong, talk about something that really means something to me, so let's dive right in. Whenever I post on my social media about my writing, I like to use the hashtag writeaboutlove, and for a long time I didn't really think much about it, it just seemed like kind of a clever turn of phrase, write about love. But recently I stopped and thought about why a phrase like that is so compelling to me, and I realized that basically it is all I write about. Of course I write about other things, but it's just such a strong theme that seems to run beneath it all and tie a lot of things together. So thinking about it kind of reminded me of this little bit of sage wisdom that was always passed around in writing courses that I took in university. Write what you know. And if I'm honest, a younger version of me hated write what you know. In fact, I took it as this challenge to like instead write about a life that in no way resembled my own. I figured that if I injected enough like clever little details about the lives of the people I was writing about that everyone would be fooled. And that might actually work for a lot of writers, but I think the jury's still out on whether I'm able to pull it off. As I got older, I think I felt like I had less to prove and I just sort of put that line of thinking out to pasture, decided I was going to write what I know, and that was probably going to be the source of some of my stronger writing. These days, it's crazy just how much my writing draws from very deep personal experiences in my life. And because my personal experiences are sometimes related to love, I just can't help but to write about love. So what does love look like for me? Well, I've been in a relationship for over 10 years with one of the most beautiful souls I'll ever know in my whole life. We've spent a long time growing together and He's taught me a lot about life, to say the least. So back at the beginning of our relationship, I was obviously a very different person than I am now. And I think that person would have been very tempted to say something like, I don't even notice he's not white. Not only would that have been a lie, but also I just generally lacked the perspective to understand why a statement like that can be problematic. And that's not to say there aren't moments and like even large parts of the day where when just he and I are together, I forget about race completely. Usually, most of the time we're alone, unless we want to talk about race, it's not really something that comes up in our private moments. But like most couples, we also like to leave the house. I have spent far too many moments adjacent as he fields yet another microaggression. It's been a slow discovery for me of just how cutting and how devastating these words can be that slip from the mouths of people who mean well. So part of the reason I haven't forgotten I'm with an Asian guy is this. Society, at least in the US where I'm from and in Canada where I live, it doesn't let me forget. The same way it doesn't let him forget that he's apparently lesser than. When we hold hands together in public, many people will look at us and make assumptions. Maybe I'm the more dominant one, maybe he's the more feminine one, he's probably the bottom. None of this is true, but it is the way a lot of people think. And if you don't believe me, just go online, do a quick search of some gay porn involving Asian and white males, and just take note of who is on top more often. It is a shocking disparity. So if you're wondering why this matters so much to me, consider this insane made-up role that we're perpetuating for Asian men in society. This role of meekness, of submissiveness. Consider the damage it causes as part of a much broader category of ill-conceived notions of who people ought to be and what they ought to do based solely on the way they look on the outside, just in case you had any doubt. Yes, I'm talking about the same old racism that's been filtering through societies forever. It never left, not even a little. So back to my stories about love. Some people might feel like stories about love should offer some escape from racism and the other ills of society. Well, I don't feel that way. I view these stories as an opportunity to personally contribute to the visibility of couples like us. And my goal is just to do it through compelling true-to-life characters who disrupt the roles that society's presupposed for them. The importance of this whole visibility thing can't really be overstated. It's so important because of the assumptions that people make when they see us in public. Harmful assumptions based on stereotypes that writing has an ability and I think an obligation to subvert. I think stories about gay love could definitely be doing some more heavy lifting, and they should. I've called my stories and novels gay romance, I've called them gay erotica, not all of them fall easily into those categories, and some of them do a lot more heavy lifting than what you typically find in those genres. Looks like this one, Thomas and Nico in the City of Trees. I just wrote it. I feel like it does a lot. I'm really proud of it. This is a proof copy. <laughs> anyway, writing some gay fiction 
that does that heavy lifting and that changes people's minds is kind of my biggest goal. I think there's plenty of room for fiction like that. And let's face it, it just makes for a better story. This has been the one and only Kid Boise <laughs> signing off.